3D printers have this really cool ability where they can print out their own tools that they need to be fixed. Kind of like a lizard can regrow its tail, a 3D printer can print out a screwdriver or whatever it may need to fix itself, which I think is really cool. As long as you have the tool printed out before the printer breaks or stops working because you can't print out the tool you need to fix it on a broken printer because it, you know what I mean? So you might as well just print them out now before you have an issue so you have them ready. Today I'm going to show you a mix of printable and purchasable tools that I think are pretty essential for 3D printing and I'm going to explain why. Of course the links to all the STLs and all the places to purchase these tools are going to be in that description down below. And there are also chapters so you can skip through this video as much or as little as you want. I promise it won't hurt my feelings. But with all that out of the way let's talk about the tools that you should probably print or buy now before you need them. If this sounds like something you might like you should subscribe because we're trying to hit 20 20K. Have you or a loved one struggled to remove the Bowden tube on your bamboo 3D printer? If so, you may be entitled to financial compensation, but not from me. What you are entitled to from me is for me to show you these easy tools to print out that will let you remove your Bowden tubes just lickety split. There are tons of different tube removal tools out there for your bamboo 3D printer. Today I'm going to show you the two that I actually use. This first one is by Mad Max 3D on Maker World and it's going to take about 45 minutes to print but it will require a screw. So if you don't have a screw or you don't want to get one I'm going to show you a second option that prints out a whole lot quicker, doesn't require a screw, and does the same job. This first one I printed out of this gorgeous Sunlu green filament and it looks a lot like the bamboo 3D printer colors coincidentally which is exactly Exactly what I was going for. With this one the idea is simple, the forks on the bottom slide underneath the filament hub and then that top arm comes down and puts pressure right onto the entrance to that Bowden tube and allows you to just pop it right on out. What I like about this design is it puts pressure on two out of four of the tubes so you can take out two at a time if you want to or need to. The print also comes with this piece that would slip onto your actual tube and helps you pull it out from the top but I didn't find this to be necessary. I found that I was able to grip the tube enough to just pull it out with my hands but either way it's there if you want it. And the second version of the Bowden tube removers is going to take a whole lot less time, a whole lot less filament but it doesn't have this cool clamp feature to it. It's going to require you to push down on your own and when you push down sometimes you're going to move the actual axis and that may or may not be good for your printer. It's kind of up in the air so this is why I'm showing you both of them so you have options. Again this one works the exact same way and applies that pressure where it really needs to be to just Slip that tube on out. Now I know what you're asking right now. Why do I need to remove these Bowden tubes so often that I need to print a tool out for it? And honestly, there are a ton of different reasons why you might need to do this. Maybe you're just moving your AMS. Maybe you're replacing the tubes. Maybe you've got some filament stuck in there that you need to get out. Or you have a clog in your extruder. If you have a clog in your extruder, I'm going to recommend the second tool on this list and it is the no clogger. This is a purchasable tool that gets rid of all of your clogs with any type of filament on any 3D printer and that sounds like a large claim because it is but I'm gonna tell you right now it's worked every single time I've tried it I've used it on my a1 mini I've used it on my a1 I've even used it on my p1s and 100% success rate for me so far again it's a really simple idea it just forces that filament that's stuck out of there why didn't I think of this sooner I mean it's such a great idea for your a1 mini or your a1 printer you're gonna pop off the top of that filament hub super easily with a screwdriver or tweezers or pretty much anything Remove the portion that has a spring on it. I should mention this is after you've removed all of your Bowden tubes, by the way. So remove the Bowden tubes, remove the cover, and then you're going to heat up your printer to a high temperature, whatever you think that is. It depends on what filament you think is stuck in there because they print at different temperatures. So if it's a PLA clog, of course, you only need to go a little bit above what you print your PLA at. But if it's an ABS clog, you're going to need to go a little bit above what you print your ABS at, which is going to be a lot higher than PLA. So choose your temperature accordingly when you're trying to unclog. But once you find out that temperature, heat up your nozzle to that temperature and then we're going to stick the no clog in there and just slowly push down and you're going to see that filament just runs right out of there. No clogs are going to survive this. And like I said I've used this on almost all of my 3D printers with a 100% success rate. Of course the steps to doing it are a little bit printer on your enclosed printers like your P1S or your X1C but again it works the exact same way at just pushing that filament out of there making sure that everything is cleared out. Now how do we avoid getting clogs in the first place? There are a ton of different things that could lead to a filament clog, but one of them that we can prevent very easily is making sure that we feed our printer clean 
straight filament. And we can do that using snips, which is going to be our third tool. I got these snips on Amazon. They're fairly cheap, 10 to $15. I'll put the actual one that I got in the link down below. They're very cheap tools. And this is a buy once, cry once kind of situation. You're going to buy it once and probably never going to need to buy it again. And there are tons of different uses for these things. But in this case, all we're going to need them for is cutting our filament to make sure that it's straight and clean and good to go into our printer. Let's take these sunless spools for example. When you open up that bag for the first time and you pull out your filament, you're going to notice that the end of that filament is pretty mangled just from shipping and whatnot. And you don't really want to feed that end into your printer because of how mangled it is. That could contribute to a clog. So we're going to take these snips and just cut the end of that filament off, give it a nice clean cut, and now good to feed that into the printer. And you're going to notice that it's going to feed a lot better and you're probably going to get a lot less issues now that you have a clean end to your filament. Also, can we appreciate how Sunloo ships out resealable bags with their filament? That's just pretty awesome if you ask me. Now I said earlier these snips have multiple different functions and this is only one of them. I'm going to show you another one later on when it comes to removing supports. Speaking of removing supports, let's talk about our next tool which is very similar to snips. It's just a smaller plier. I use these things almost every single day to remove supports from my prints super easily and I prefer them over the snips because you can't really get a good grip with the snips because it's just going to cut right through that tower because it's so thin and that's just not what I want in this situation. Again, this is a very cheap pair that I found on Amazon. Of course, that link is going to be down below, but they do the job perfectly. So if you just buy these two tools right off the bat, you're going to be good to go for pretty much ever. I don't really see these things ever breaking, so I don't see a reason why you'd have to buy some more in the future. I don't think I really need to explain to you what pliers do. They just grab things and they grab them very specifically and very tightly. That's probably the worst explanation that I've ever heard of pliers, but they just grab things. So we're going to use these to grab some supports off of this support test that I printed out and just look at how easily it removes these supports. Now, sometimes the supports don't play well and you do get a little bit left over. That's completely fine. We're going to fix that later. You can see that using these pliers just makes that support removal so much easier than using your fingers. And I've actually injured myself removing these supports, which is honestly, I don't really know why I'm telling you that. That's kind of embarrassing, but it did happen. So I would just use the pliers. And when we talking about the snips we said they had some use for support removal here it is right here if you have some of those stubborn supports that just aren't coming off the way you want but they just left a little bit of filament on the surface we can just take those snips and make that a clean surface clean support removal just like that I just think these tools pair very well together, especially with 3D printing in mind. You know what else you could use pliers for? Holding really tiny screws. You know what you need to get out really tiny screws? A screwdriver. This is the Fantic E1 Max electric screwdriver and it's exactly what you've been missing from your toolbox. This is a product that I have in my Gridfinity drawers and I actually use almost every single day. The first thing you'll notice is the very sleek and modern packaging, which is a perfect representation of the quality and design of this electric screwdriver. It sits in this super cool aluminum box and with just a push, the screwdriver pops out along with 50 different bits stored in this super cool magnetic case. The screwdriver has two different torque settings and a very convenient LED ring to light up whatever you're screwing in or unscrewing. It's charged with a USB-C cable and will last for over two hours on a single charge, which is probably a lot more than you're going to need in one sitting, that's for sure. Now, Fantic is no stranger to making high quality products. They have won multiple different design awards and the E1 Max has actually been an Amazon bestseller for the past six months and it's really no surprise why. Make sure to check out the link below to get a discount on the E1 Max if you're interested and if you happen to need a soldering iron. I've heard they have a pretty cool one of those as well. Thanks again to Fantic for sponsoring today's video and thank you to you for watching this and helping support the channel. After you've been working on your printer, there is a good chance that if you're like me, you used your build plate as a workbench, which honestly you should never do. I just can't seem to break that habit. So what do I do when this happens? I clean the build plate. And that's where the next tool comes in, which is a build plate cleaner. Now this one is a little bit of a two in one because we have the spray bottle that sprays the isopropyl alcohol. And then we have the actual microfiber cloth that cleans the build plate. So this is kind of like a two tool in one type of situation. This is one of my very first prints ever and it is still going to this day. You can see that this microfiber has probably seen some better days. In fact, I actually need to change it out. It's a super cool print that just stores your microfiber cloth inside this device and makes it super easy to clean your build plate. Now we can take our spray bottle full of isopropyl alcohol or soapy water or whatever you decide to clean your build plate with, spray it all over our build plate, and then we can use 
use our microfiber cleaner and clean this thing up. Now this should solve almost all of our issues with build plate adhesion. Speaking of build plate adhesion, what do you do when a print is just so stuck on there you can't get it off? You use the next tool, that's what you do if you couldn't guess. And the next tool is going to be a scraper for getting off those just super stubborn prints or some of those purge lines. This is a very inexpensive scraper. You can get these things in all sorts of different price points, but you really don't need anything expensive. This was like two bucks. It just uses a blade to scrape off whatever you need off of your build plate. Now, of course, you have to be careful because this can damage your build plate. So I'm telling you right now, be careful. This can damage your build plate. That is my speech to you so that it's not my fault if you ruin your build plate. I've been using this thing forever and have not ruined a plate yet. So just be very careful. I love this tool for getting off those stubborn purge lines or those prints that just won't won't come off even if you bend the plate sometimes they just don't pop off if they're super thin so we can just use this slide it right under the print and just pop it off now I usually don't slide it fully under the print I just kind of get under a corner and pop it up just enough to get it off of the build plate that's it and when it comes to those purge lines especially with ABS I have found that those things just do not come off they are like glued to the build plate so we're gonna take our scraper and just scrape it right on off and we're good to go ready for the next print now speaking of glue you really should have some glue handy if you're 3d printing this is the glue that i use to glue together all of my pla and petg printed parts now it depends on what material you're printing out of what glue is going to work the best but because i primarily print in those two this glue works amazing and this bottle has lasted me a very long time and i still got about half of it left i do feel like i need to put another disclaimer wear gloves when you use this stuff it says on the side that it will bond your skin in seconds now I didn't believe that so I didn't use gloves when I first did this and you're never gonna believe it but it bonds your skin in seconds it's pretty impressive but it works amazing you can see here I'm just gonna put some glue on these threads now of course this really isn't when you would need to use the glue I just thought it'd be a cool test so I'm gonna glue this and we're gonna wait literally about two and a half minutes and you can see this thing is just it's rock it's a rock. It's not coming off. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that I have never glued something with this glue and it came undone. That is how good this stuff is. And you need a very little amount so you don't use very much of it. It goes a very long way. Speaking of going a long way, these are some really long 3D printed pliers that you can use to get that poop off of your build plate mid prints. Obviously, there are tons of different uses for this print. That's just what I use it for specifically. If I notice something on the build plate that just shouldn't be there, usually a piece of poop on my P1S or my X1C because it just somehow misses that shoot kind of often, I can just pause the print, go in with these pliers, remove the assailant, and continue the print. I don't have to worry about that piece of whatever getting stuck on the print or just getting where it shouldn't be and causing all sorts of issues. You can even play a fun game if you want to where you can try to grab whatever it is you're grabbing on the 3 printer while it's printing don't even pause it it's pretty fun but it's a high risk high reward kind of situation so and i know these are 3d printed but they actually grip like really good i don't know if you can tell but these things put some pressure on whatever you're grabbing which is perfect they're basically just good for getting rid of stuff on your build plate that shouldn't be there that might interact with your print speaking of interacting I'm just kidding. I really don't have another segue into this next one. I've been thinking for a while and there's just nothing. So this is a caliber and it's another tool that you need if you're 3D printing. Calibers are another tool that you can get either super cheap or extremely expensive in the hundreds of dollars if you want to. This is one from Harbor Freight. So it was like 10 bucks max. But because I'm not printing anything that needs to be extremely precise, it works out perfectly for me. It's got a battery in it that lasts a very long time. I've never changed it in the years that I've had it. And it has the option of either showing you inches or millimeters depending on what you want now i usually do everything in millimeters just because it's a lot more universal with everything and i mean let's be honest inches are why are we using inches like let's just let's let's make the switch okay let's do it what i can do is show you how useful these are just right off the bat printing something super simple let's say we need a washer on this piece that i found right here all we got to do is take a measurement of the screw at the widest point and then we can take this onto the computer into on shape create our washer shape we know the diameter of the screw that it needs to fit around and we know how wide we want the washer to be and how tall we want the washer to be so we can put those measurements into on shape upload it to maker world 
select our materials, all of that good stuff, send it to our printer, and literally 10 minutes after measuring this thing, we have a washer that fits almost perfectly. Now, of course, I could refine this a little bit if I wanted to and get it tighter or looser, depending on how I want the fit to be. But this is just an example to show you how useful calibers are in solving some of your own specific problems. Speaking of solving problems, I like to solve your 3D printer problems, so you should subscribe because that was actually the end of the video. So if you want to see more videos like this, then you should subscribe because of course there's going to be a bunch more coming out. And if you did like the video, I would recommend leaving a like just because that's kind of the nice thing to do. If you like something, then leave a like. That's it. If you really liked it, you should subscribe and also so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. You should also let me know what you think of the tools that I put in this video in the comments down below. If you think I just totally missed it and you want to leave a hate comment, go for it. I mean, I can't stop you. You're just some person on the internet, so do whatever you want. But if you think I did good on this list, you could also leave that comment or you could tell me what tools I should have included or I should include on a part two of this video if it happens, which is another reason you should subscribe so you don't miss that one but that's all i have to tell you today i think i provided you a pretty good list of some cool tools that you should check out for your 3d printer that's all i got for you you should check out some of my other videos and you should have a great rest of your day and i'll see you later or you'll see me in the past on one of my previous videos so see ya